Hi, I'm Clark Dennis Cundiff, and I'm the pastor at Bay Lake United Methodist Church on 4300 Shore Drive in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and coming to you on this Sunday morning, March the 20th, 2022, um, with our message for a day. We are in the third Sunday of Lent, and we are continuing to study uh, Max Lucata. <laughs> he chose the nails. And this Sunday, the focus is he, Jesus, chose to invite us into his presence. And it's like, <laughs> as the example he gives in his book, <clears throat> um, I can't go see the president. Well, I mean, I could, I guess, but he won't see me, right? Because he doesn't know me. He's the president of the United States. Only people who are important, like, you know, the vice president, the congressmen, the senators, they have access to the president, which is, you know, fine. I don't <laughs> need to see the president. But God who's much greater than any and all of us, any person on earth. God who created the universe, created the earth, created each one of us in God's image. We're beloved children of God of immense worth and value. God invites me, <laughs> invites you into God's presence. In the Methodist Church, we, we talk about uh, grace, and one of those types of grace we describe as prevenient grace, that the grace that comes before, that God loves us. Before we're even born, God loves us. And God always loves us first and always want to woo us into a relationship, invite us deeper into a relationship. So Jesus invites us into Jesus' presence. And <clears throat> the crazy thing is that wouldn't happen unless what Jesus did for us, right? Because we have a perfect God. And ever since Adam and Eve, we've been in a broken world inclined to evil, the beast within, you know, the beauty and the beast. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the power of the love of God, with the power of Jesus Christ, we can have a relationship with God because of what Jesus did, right? Hebrews 10, 19 and 20 says, We are completely free to enter the most holy place without fear because of the blood of Jesus' death. We can enter through a new and living way that Jesus opened for us. He leads us through the curtain, Christ's body, right? Jesus has not left us with an unapproachable God. Yes, God is holy and perfect without sin. Yes, we are sinful, but Jesus is our mediator. He was the curtain between us and God, and his flesh was torn for you and me. Remember in Matthew 27, 50, this is when Jesus is near the end. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, shook and the rocks were split. Now he's, he's talking about the, the temple, the Jewish temple that was in Jerusalem. And we understand from best we can recall or from history and from other sources, there was a series of courts, each a little higher than the one before, um, with the temple itself and the very inmost of the courts. First, there was a court of the Gentiles, or anybody could come pretty much. Uh, then there was a court of the women, and then of the men, but only Israelite men, right? Then the court of the priest. And finally, the holy of holies, the holy place itself, only into the first of these could a Gentile come the very beginning? Between it and the court of the women was a wall inscribed with the message that if a Gentile proceeded any further, the person was liable to instant death. So we have big walls between Gentiles and God and then even between women and God and between Israelites and God, even the priest and God, because in that innermost holy of holies that only one priest chosen by lot was to go one day of the year where the Ark of the Covenant was kept, which is considered to, where the Ark of the Covenant kept with the remnants of the uh, tablets of the Ten Commandments that were su suspected to be there, but it represented the presence of God. That's what the important part. To the Israelites then, that was the presence of God. And between the Ark of the Covenant was a curtain, and a thick, heavy, probably, curtain, from the best we can understand. And the moment that Jesus died, that curtain was torn from top to bottom. Completely. So now this barrier that had been between us and God is removed. The curtain is torn. 
So in Ephesians 2, 17, so he, Jesus, came and proclaimed peace to you who are far off and peace to those who are near. And for through him, both of us have access to the one spirit, to the Father, right? Paul describes Christ's peace as reconciling both groups, Gentile and Jew, to God. See, back in the early Christianity, there was still this big rift between Gentiles and Jews, and Jews had all these laws, and they wanted to make all the Gentiles do the same rules. And God was saying, no, Jesus came for all people, masters and slave and men and women and Jews and Gentiles. So what walls do we erect? There was that wall between us and God that through Jesus's Suffering on the cross, that we've forgiven our sins as we ask for forgiveness and dying. That curtain was torn from top to bottom, so we have direct access. We don't have to go through a priest. We don't have to go through a pastor. We have direct access to God. I once participated in a, a series of classes, and for, first was Pursuit of Excellence to understand some basic universal principles that are in the Bible that helps us to be more effective. And the second one was a weekend retreat that helped you breakthrough walls. It's like, what are the walls in your life that's preventing you from living your rich, full life? So have us focus, what might be on the other side of the wall that you're not currently experiencing, that you want to experience? What are those pieces of this rich, full life of living into God's call in your life to use your gifts and graces that is not quite being realized? So what's on the other side of that wall? So we spent the whole weekend discerning what was on the other side of the wall the end in mind, and how we can break through the walls that we've created to achieve what we truly want, to have that rich, full life, as John 10.10 10 says. So the biggest walls in our lives we need to break down may be the walls within ourselves that prevent us from receiving the grace and blessing of God that God wants to give us. You know, we always say, if you feel distance from God, it's, it's <clears throat> God didn't move. <laughs> it's I did, right? I moved. So what could be on the other side of that wall? The power of God's Holy Spirit. As we choose to profess our faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have this power of the Holy Spirit that's with all of us at the same time. That that is the way I can not do the evil that I may be inherently inclined to do without the power of the Holy Spirit to keep me from doing that or to recognize what I am doing and to make amends for it. The ability to repair a relationship with loved one may be on the other side of the wall for you. The healing to be able to commit again to a relationship that experience, after experiencing a deep wound from an earlier relationship. You know, I had one that was a deep emotional wound that took me years for me to allow the Holy Spirit to heal that wound within me. So part of dissolving and breaking down those walls is the acknowledgement that we are God's children. And each of us, beloved children of God, loved unconditionally. So the cross of Jesus tears apart that veil unless it's inside the holy of holies into the heart of God. And what do we see there? Oh my gosh, unfathomable love, unfathomable forgiveness, a compassion and tenderness beyond understanding. Christ without guilt took upon himself our punishment in order that he might thus expiate our guilt and do away with our punishment. Augustine said that. 1 Peter 3.18 says, For Christ who suffered sins once and for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. Jesus who was righteous took on our sins for us, the unrighteous, so that we could become righteous. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself, the cornerstone. This is Ephesians 2, 19 and 20. So the cross achieved what no human ever could, the reconciliation of a sinful humanity with God. God is the loving benefactor, offering all people a stake in salvation. By dying on the cross, God breaks down the wall that separates humanity from God. Humans are too trapped in the deadly effect of sin to return to God on our own, right? We need that gift that Jesus gave us. And even notice the wall that's keeping, us, keeping God out. Sometimes we don't notice. People still need to be convinced of God's unconditional love. God loves us no matter what, all the time. So through Jesus, there is a place for all people in the family of God. God never puts up barriers. It is a tragedy of the church that it is it is the tragedy of the church <laughs> that it, the church, is often more exclusive than God, right? God doesn't put our barriers, but we do, don't we? 
What school did you go to? What neighborhood do you live in? Well, how much do you make? Well, how many people are you responsible for at work? You know, how big is your house? How fancy is your car? So there is no curtain in the temple, and so we would hope there's no curtain in our hearts. But even knowing this, we start to put barriers back up, right? We decline the forgiveness God wants to give us, the healing God wants to bring to us, that we want to somehow put up these curtains again to separate us from God. When Jesus tore them all down, we're not worthy. We're beloved children of God, of its worth and way. God loves us exactly where we are, no matter what. Somewhere, sometimes, somehow, you got tangled up in garbage and you have been avoiding God. Maybe, do I avoid God when I've not been as good as I should have been, not followed God as more closely, hasn't, didn't do my scripture reading today? You've allowed a veil of guilt to come between you and your father. Guilt, uh, the fact of having committed an offense, especially against the law feeling of responsibility for wrongdoing. But just know that what Jesus did, that that curtain was torn from top to bottom. There are no barriers between us and God except those we choose to put up. You came to the cross dressed in sin, but you leave dressed in the coat of God's strong love, Jesus' strong love, girded with the belt of goodness and fairness and clothed and the garments of salvation. May we realize there is no wall between us and God. And if we have erected one, Lord, help us with the power of your Holy Spirit to break through those walls, to tear down those walls and embrace your unconditional love for us, to embrace, to love you, Lord, and to love each other so we can live into that rich, full life you want each one of us to have. May God bless you. Hope you'll join us on Sunday mornings at 9 and 11 in person or on Facebook Live and YouTube. May God bless you. And as always, we pray for peace of this war with Russia and Ukraine. Pray that Russia would withdraw and Putin would, would see clear to a peaceful settlement of this conflict. And pray for all the people who lost loved ones on both sides, Lord. Just pray for your healing presence to be amidst all of it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.